Hello, my name is Maxim and in today's full stack GraphQL tutorial for beginners, we're gonna build Instagram clone, but just for kittens. So in our version, we'll only have cat photos. GraphQL allows you to fetch data using queries and update it using mutations. In this tutorial, we're gonna focus on queries and fetching data. Here is what we're gonna build. We'll fetch a list of posts. For each post, we'll get author name, image, and a list of comments. The application is quite simple and for the cat photos, we are using cat as a service website. On this website, you can query different cat photos. For this app, I'm basically querying cats tagged as cute. And before we start coding the app, why even use GraphQL? Over the years, REST has become the standard for designing web APIs. REST means representational state transfer. And it offers such great ideas as stateless servers and structured access to resources. But designing a good REST API is a challenging task. It requires you to have a good understanding of both REST architectural style and solid knowledge of HTTP protocol itself. One of the usual problems with REST APIs is inefficient data fetching. For example, it can be under fetching. It is a situation when you don't have enough data from one endpoint and it requires you to have several round trips to collect all the data that you need. Let's consider a blog example. It has posts and each post can have multiple comments. In REST API, one has to gather the required information from multiple endpoints. Here we first get post with ID 1 to get its title and maybe other fields like text. We call get posts and point with ID 1 and get data associated with this post. Now to get comments, we make another call to our API. We call comment and points for the same blog post and get list of comments. In GraphQL, it can be achieved with a single instance query. In this example, we send post ID and form of the data we're going to receive to our GraphQL server. As a result, we get data formatted exactly like we specified in our query. Using GraphQL, it's way easier to design a good API. It requires you less thinking upfront and allows you to work on your queries and optimize them as you go with your application. Now let's get back to our kitten gram example and we'll start with the backend. There is a bunch of GraphQL libraries available to build your GraphQL backend. Among them GraphQL.js, Express GraphQL and Apollo Server. We'll use Apollo Server to build our app. In this step, we'll use your terminal to create kitten gram server folder and initialize a simple Node.js app there. Start by creating a kitten gram server folder using make dir command. And now initialize new Node.js project using npm. You can pass yes option to skip all the questions. If everything went fine, you should see package.json in your directory. Step number two, install dependencies. Now we'll install two dependencies that are necessary to respond to GraphQL requests. It is Apollo server and GraphQL. The Apollo server does all the heavy lifting and allows us to focus on defining the shape of your data. GraphQL is a library that allows you to build schema and then execute queries on that scheme. Run the following command to install both of those dependencies. Step number three, create the server. Open the kittengram server directory using your editor of choice. Create file index.js with the following contents. First, we import Apollo Server and uh, GQL from Apollo Server. Apollo Server will do all the heavy lifting, as I said, and it will basically do all the job for us. And GQL is needed to parse the GraphQL queries. Next line, we define our mock data. We have our photos, where each of them has author, URL, comments section with an array of comments. And we have two of those photos posts. As we scroll down, you'll see the query defined by GQL. And this query basically defines the form of the data that you will be able to fetch using your client. In our case, query will have photos, and each photo will have following fields. It will have author, URL, comments, and we define comment as another type, which has author and text. As you can see, these queries are typed, so for each field we can specify what type is this field. In our case, it's either strings or custom fields like comments. Next, we have to write resolvers. And resolvers are functions that will populate our query with data. In our case, we just populate photos field by our data that we defined in the beginning of the file. Next, we launch our Apollo server. We pass our type devs defined with GQL and the resolvers to populate our data. We call method listen on our server. It will return a promise that when resolved, we'll return a URL that we can use to output to the console. Step four, launch the server. Run the index.js file that we created on previous step. You should see the following output. Open the provided address. If everything is working correctly, you should see this GraphQL Provider Explorer tool. This tool is interactive. On the left, you can write your query. And uh, on the right, when you click play, 
you will get the results according to this query. Let's try removing the comments section. We press play and now we get just photos without the comments. Now it's time to work on the frontend. Again, there are several libraries available to work with GraphQL on client. And most popular of them are Relay, the official Facebook client and Apollo. As we've already used Apollo to set up our backend, let's continue this tradition and use it for client as well. Step 1. Application setup. In this tutorial, we'll set up our application using Create React App. Create Kit and Gram application. Here I've used npx to run Create React App. If you have Create React App installed globally, you could run it directly instead. npx is npm package runner. It is available with Node.js installation since version number 6. It is often being used to run one-time off commands. So when you use it, you don't have to install them first. But it also can be used for other tasks too. And I will leave a link to the documentation page if you are curious. Step number two, install dependencies. For this application, we'll need to install Apollo Boost that will handle all the communication using GraphQL. We'll have to install React Apollo to connect our Apollo with the React part and GraphQL to parse the queries. Now let's install those packages. Step number three, create client. After we have all the independencies installed, we have to initialize GraphQL client. Open your index.js file and import Apollo client and GQL from Apollo Boost. Initialize Apollo client passing your URL there. I've already deployed both applications, backend and frontend on glitch.com, so I'm using my glitch server to get the GraphQL data. If you want, you can also use my glitch kittengram server project. After you've set up your client, you can make a test query calling the query method. This method returns a promise that when resolved, will return a result that we can log in our console. I send the query to get all the photos with uh, all the data and comments lists as well. Let's check if it works. If everything is set up correctly, you should see this result in the console. As we know now that our GraphQL client works properly, we can go to step 4 and integrate it with React. To connect Apollo client to React, we'll use Apollo provider from React Apollo package. Import it and wrap your application into this provider. It works just like context providers. I've posted the link in the description with the tutorial about React context. After you wrap your application into Apollo provider and pass your client as client prop to it, you can go to step 5 and fetch the data. We use query component from React Apollo to fetch data in our application. It uses context created by Apollo provider, so we can pass query to our query component. And our query is same as on previous step, where we were basically checking that our client works. We pass in the GraphQL query, photos, URL, author, and comments data that we want to get. And then we pass a function to our query component as a child. It is so-called render prop pattern in React. In this function, we use the structuring assignment to break loading error and data fields out of the props. If data is still being loaded, we show preloader. If we have error, we display it. And if everything is fine and we got our data, we iterate through the photos using the map method. And for each photo, we show our layout. Here in my example, I'm using styled components to create all those header, image, and footer elements. I've posted a link in the description to the repo with these components, so you can reuse them or just check out how I did it. But anyway, it's not the main part here. The important part is that we get the data and we display it. Also, we loop through our comments and display them as well. And after you are done with this step, you've basically finished your application. At this point, you should have functional GraphQL backend and frontend, and you should be able to see this app in your browser. Thank you for watching for this tutorial. I will leave both repos for backend and frontend so you can check the code that we, will be, that we have been working on today. And also I've created two Glitch applications that I will also post as links in the description for this video. As I said in the beginning, in this video we were touching only the queries. In one of the next videos we will try to use mutations and maybe add likes or commenting capabilities to our fake Kittengram application. Subscribe to see the new videos and press a like button if you like this one. See you next time.